All right. Good morning, everybody. It is um, March 6, 2022, and it's our uh, first Sunday of the month, Sunday Circle. Welcome, welcome, everybody who's here. Glad to have you. Um, so the spring equinox is coming up, and um, we will be presenting a ritual um, on the 19th for that. But I thought it would be fun today to talk about um, some of the origins of, of seasonal practices um, among other cultures and religions, a lot of them um, going way, way back, you'll see in a few minutes here. And then wanted to talk about what a modern, modern pagan folk do for spring equinox and hear from you all about what you do. I'm very curious. Um, thought it would be worthwhile to define the term pagan for the purpose of my little presentation today. And so when I'm using the word pagan, I'm referring to anybody who is not part of a, a Abrahamanical religion. So um, anybody who's not Muslim or uh, Jewish or Christian. And so very broad definition of pagan. Pagan can take on a lot of different um, definitions for folks. But so I wanted to be clear what definition I'm using today. So that's that. <clears throat> um, thought it would be fun to touch on what what the equinox actually is, what, where the word comes from and what it means, and then um, sort of what's happening in the, in the sun and earth relationship on the equinox so that we have understanding of that. So the word uh, equinox actually comes from Latin equinoctium, which uh, if we break it into its two pieces, equa meaning equal, and then nox is the Latin word for night. And so it means equal night. And um, astronomically, I have a little definition in here, but essentially it means the point at, in the, the cycle each year that uh, the sun, the visible sun is directly above the equator. So that's how the, the equinox uh, timing is calculated each year. And um, depending on where someone's latitude is, like how far north or south of the equator they are, um, the moment of exact equal day and night uh, is often not actually on the day of the equinox. It can be several days before, several days after. So worthwhile to notice. And while I was doing my research, I came across this other term, equal looks, which would mean equal light. And that's the actual day of there being um, the same amount of daylight versus dark. And so the equilux point and the equinox point are sometimes the same day, but not always. So I thought that would be fun to mention. And I also want to acknowledge that not everybody on the planet lives above the equator. We have uh, millions of people who live south of the equator. And so for those folks in March, it's actually the start of autumn for them. It's the autumn equinox. So easy to get Northern hemisphere centric and think of the equinox as the first day of spring, but friends in South America, Australia, other places uh, on the globe, they're actually celebrating the start of fall uh, later this month. So some stuff to think about there. The actual equinox this year is um, on March 20th, uh, late morning, 1033 AM central time. And so within La Florian, we'll be celebrating uh, Equinox Eve the night before on March 20th, and we'll be presenting a ritual that uh, folks are welcome to sign in and attend. We're going to be using excerpts of an original ritual for spring that Reverend Jerry wrote, and then some of our standard ritual of La Florian text. So it'd be great to have some of you joining us for that if you're available that evening. It's a Saturday. We'll be starting at 7.30 Central Time via Zoom. Um, most of you know, I'm also an astrologer. And so astrologically, uh, the equinox represents the moment that the sun enters the sign of Aries coming out of the sun of Pisces, where it has just spent the last four weeks or so we're, we're in Pisces still right now, obviously. And so, um, big shift astrologically in terms of energy going from a water sign into a fire sign. And for folks who may not know a lot about Aries, Aries is very much a sign. It's a it's symbol, it's animal, it's the ram. We can think of this energy of pushing forward, of initiating the new season, of, of creating change. And that's a lot of what Aries is about. 
very appropriate that it's a fire sign. There's this idea of um, outward energy. Mars is the ruling planet of Aries. So we can think about martial things like starting projects or changing something or uh, coming into situations in life with courage and uh, the embracing of the change that may arise when we work with Aries energy. So I did some research leading up to today's discussion, and I was curious what some of the oldest known uh, spiritual and religious practices are related to the equinox. And the oldest thing I could find dates back to the Sumerian culture going to 3000 BC, so about 5,000 years ago. And I'll give a quick overview of this myth of Inanna. Inanna is a celestial goddess who in later versions became known as Ishtar and she uh, is the queen of heaven and earth. So she's very um, above the earth of the stars and they have a myth that she journeys to the underworld and then returns. And while she's in the underworld, the earth falls into a state of coldness, darkness, um, things don't grow, there's not fertility going on, agriculture is not happening, the world is asleep. And so we get this feeling of winter. And then when Inanna returns, uh, things start to grow again, the, the coming of spring happens and the plants start to wake up, the animals get more active, the ones that hibernate come out of hibernation and so forth. This will be a theme today. And one of the most ancient practices associated with this myth of Inanna in the Sumerian culture is that each time around the spring equinox, the king of various um, temple cities would symbolically take on the role of Inanna's consort, Dumuzi. And there would be a ritual where the king would marry a priestess who represented Inanna to kind of symbolize this uh, unit of polarities, this coming together of um, masculine and feminine, yin and yang, in order to, as we say in Lothlorien, bring forth the birth, the true creation. So there's this idea that the goddess coming out of the underworld and returning to the earth and bringing that light and that fertility and that abundance back to the earth is a cause for celebration. And I love this symbolic sacred marriage ritual that uh, would be conducted 5,000 years ago in the Sumerian culture. And this depiction is of Dumuzi and Inanna and their sacred marriage. Another really ancient practice that occurs around the spring equinox is called Nauruz. And Nauruz translates to new day in Persian. And again, it's a spring equinox seasonal celebration. It originated with the Mithraic and Zoroastrian people of Iran circa 3000 BC also. So very ancient, 5,000 years ago. Uh, it isn't limited to the practices in the Iranian region though, um, especially in ancient times, it was celebrated widely. Parts of Asia, the Balkans, um, Caucasus and beyond. It's still a huge holiday among the Iranian and Persian people. This photo of this beautiful young woman, she's a Kurdish woman in Iran and they're preparing for their annual Nauruz celebration. Uh, when I lived in Seattle, I had extensive Persian community friends and got invited to some of their Nauruz celebrations. And it, it goes on for 13 days and they usually uh, stay up and lay a table of, of feasts and offerings and items that represent the four elements and also the realms of animals, of people, of plants. So the number seven is very significant in Nauru's celebrations and um, their celebrations start with the equinox and then go for almost two weeks after that. And there's dancing, there's music, there's feasting. Again, it's the celebration of the return of light of the new day, meaning the days will grow longer in the Northern hemisphere. And one of the customs that still exists among people who celebrate Nauru's is um, spring cleaning. So they, they clean their homes, they get rid of things, they shake out all their rugs, they, they really invite this return of light and this new energy into their homes. And 
the flowers that are traditionally used in Nauru celebrations are hyacinths and tulips, which gardeners know here in the Northern Hemisphere, those are starting to come up and bloom in early spring. So you can feel that connection. And I just love this photo of this beautiful Kurdish girl in Iran. Equinox celebrations also date back to ancient Egypt. Uh, they had a holiday that they celebrated around the equinox called Sham el Nasim. Uh, first records of that being celebrated date back almost as far as Nauru's and the sacred marriage to 2700 BC. And again, a lot of feasting, uh, picnicking outside, acknowledging the end of the cycle where the Nile Valley was dry for the winter because the, the big rains and the flooding would come soon. And this is one of the first cultures that we acknowledged the decorating of eggshells. They had stories of a magical ibis bird, which is depicted here in this picture. And the eggs that this magical ibis bird would lay represented life and new life and birth and spring and possibility. And so they would ornately decorate the shells of, of these ibis eggs. And today still in Egypt, uh, if you look online for pictures, they do incredibly ornate egg decoration with uh, patterns and colors, and it's really, really beautiful. So Sham el Nassim is still celebrated in Egypt today. Getting a little bit later into history, um, the Hittites occupied the region now mostly Eastern Turkey, and this culture does not exist anymore, but we still know a lot about their celebrations from things that were left behind, such as this uh, depiction of the storm god fighting Ilyanka, uh, a serpent of destruction and chaos. And in this story, uh, Tarhun, the storm god, battles the serpent and loses the first time. He doesn't die, but he's incapacitated. The serpent takes his eyes and in some versions of the story, also his heart. And so Tarhun and the other gods and the humans as part of the Peruli festival would petition and plead to Inara, who is an agrarian goddess, a goddess of the fertility of the fields and of plants and of growth. They would appeal to her to help. And so she would come to Tarhun's aid and then together they would be able to defeat this Ilyanka serpent. And so if we think back to the Inanna story, it's similar in some ways. We have the earth falling into cold and darkness. We have the end of fertility and abundance for a period of time. And then something shifts in the spring and suddenly light is able to overtake and overcome darkness so that uh, fertility and life and light can return to the world. So this is going to be uh, close to our hearts as neo-pagans who um, are inspired by mystery cults. The lesser Eleusinian mysteries were observed around the spring equinox. Um, and there's an article about this in the Rowan Tree News that just came out this week, if you want to read more about it. Um, one of our lay ministers, Anne, did some research and read a whole article about this, so you can get all the details. But essentially, this mystery school of Eleusis was active from about 1600 BC to almost 400 CE, so 2000 years. And the spring equinox practice within that mystery cult represented the apotai, the, the novices, the non-initiates, those who had not yet experienced the mysteries being introduced to the story of Demeter, who is um, also a goddess of agriculture, her daughter, the Kore, who later became Persephone, and Persephone's journey to the underworld and return, which would return life and light to the earth. So hopefully you're picking up on this theme that is very resonant and woven throughout all of these cultures and stories. And so in these lesser Eleusinian mysteries, the Apotai, the, the, the newer devotees to the, the mystery cult would experience the story of Demeter, Persephone, and Hades, and all the characters being enacted via ritual theater. And I have the pomegranates here because that plays into the story of Persephone and her journey to the underworld. Another one around that same time, originated in Phrygia, uh, also around 1200 BC and continued for 
to almost 2000 years into Greece. Attis uh, is a, a god who was beloved by the goddess Kibele and um, kind of star-crossed lovers type story. Eventually he becomes heartbroken and bereft. And as he uh, lays, lays dying in the forest, Kibele comes and uh, cradles him, puts her arms around him and transforms him into a beautiful pine tree so that he will not die and he will live on in the form of, uh, of a tree. So that's a, a beautiful story from ancient Phrygia. And again, we're looking at the cycle of life that the, the natural world that the plants undergo, that there's a death that happens in the winter and then a, a rebirth and a resurrection in spring. And Attis was one of the first gods of antiquity who uh, we have stories of a, a death and then a, a resurrection in the spring. And so there's a, a belief that the, the story of Christ was very much inspired by some of these myths of Inanna, of uh, Attis, of um, a, div a divinity who underwent a transformation and then was reborn in the spring. Similarly to the story of Addis and Kibele, the Romans later um, adopted a festival called Hilaria, which it's just as you might imagine. It's the word where we get the word hilarious. That's where that comes from. Um, there was a whole process of several days of ritual, eight days, that would start with a ritual mourning for the death of the god Addis, and then processions, uh, a cutting down and ceremonial wrapping and reverence of trees. Um, goddess statues of Kibele were displayed and then the, the festival would culminate with games, masquerades, celebrations. And it was also observed around the spring equinox each year. Getting more modern now, um, Eoster is a West Germanic spring goddess. She was worshiped starting about 2000 years ago, and she represents in the West Germanic uh, stories and culture, uh, dawn, the radiant dawn, the upspringing of light, of joy and blessing. So very, very benefic and radiant feminine divinity. And she was also revered and celebrated around the equinox each year. And if you look at this word, you'll see that it's very similar to the name of uh, the spring equinox holiday for pagans, which is Eostara, so, or Ostara. Sometimes you see it without the E in front of it. And so the belief is that her name and this goddess and this West Germanic spring festival dating back almost 2000 years is uh, the origins and inspiration for modern day Eostara uh, practices, celebrations and rituals. And that was a really fast uh, crash course of <laughs> spring equinox festivals and rituals in um, more ancient cultures. And with that, I will stop my recording and open it up to all of us to have discussion about more modern neo-pagan spring equinox observances and rituals.